Hello friends, how are you? Welcome to Goyal Classes. This is Rajat Goyal and today I am going to discuss with you the answer key for Food Technology Gate 2021 exam. As you all know that IIT Bombay has released the candidate response sheet for each and every student who has appeared for the exam. So, uh, so I usually suggest that one should always go forward and calculate their predicted scores See, whatever the final score or whatever the final answer key comes out, it will be the final judgment. But one must be ready that what kind of scores are we getting so that we can start preparing for the B plan if in case we have to. So that is why with that aim, I have brought you for Excel and XC answer keys, right? So candidate response sheets are out. Now I want to just convey one thing that since XC food technology is of 35 marks and Excel food technology is of 30 marks. So there would be some uh, questions which would be appearing in the XC uh, branch but would not be appearing in the Excel. So for those food technology candidates who are watching it for Excel, please don't panic if you did not have that particular question in your set because it, did, it was not meant to be there in your set. So let's start. Starting with the MCQs, then we will move to the multiple select questions, which were uh, uh, which were uh, really something uh, unique this time in the gate examination. And then towards the end, we'll be discussing about the numericals. So the first MCQ that we have is is about which one of the following microorganism is not a causative agent for foodborne diseases. So friends, whenever we are attempting these kind of questions, first of all, circle this that we have to find which is not a causative agent. As I have marked here, so option three becomes your right answer, uh, whereas your Campylobacter jejuni, Clostridium perfringens, and Nuru virus are all the three which are uh, which are foodborne diseases. So Nuru virus is a very uh, uh, problematic foodborne virus in the United States and uh, every year there are several cases find in it. Now this uh, option 3 which we find here that is Borrelia burgdorferi, ferry is caused by the uh, biting of black ticks. So this is a photo of black ticks which I have put here for your future references whenever you find this question or whenever you find this option. So uh, the correct answer for this is option 3. Now the next question, question 2 is which one of the following enzymes sequentially releases maltose from starch? So guys, all of us know that starch uh, is a polymer which is made up of uh, amylose and amylopectin. So there are various enzymes which break this starch. So the correct answer that uh, which re the enzyme which releases maltose is your beta amylase. It, release, it uh, takes out maltose units from the starch. Okay, so now the third question is which of the following is not a fermented food? So guys again, I'll circle not since we have to find that which of them is not a fermented food. So in these kind of question, one should always try to go with the elimination method. So since all of us know that sauerkraut, it is a fermented cabbage and fermented, we don't, we want the answer which is not fermented. Vinegar is also fermented and tempeh is also a soy fermented product. But if we see tofu, tofu is a non-fermented but a precipitated product out of soy milk. Hence the answer becomes tofu. Next question. Next question is that what is a bittering agent present in grapefruit formed after juice extraction? So now friends, whenever we are reading such kind of question, we should always try to relate this with our daily life. So where do we find grape juice the most? Grape juice is find, found in the wine industry the most. And what kind of uh, fruit a grape is, it, we can say it is a citrus uh, fruit. Now, if I go with the elimination method, first of all, we should uh, eliminate isohumulones. Now, isohumulones are compounds which are found in hops. And hops are bittering agents in the beer. Hence, no relation with grape. 
so we should first eliminate isohumulone then we should uh, eliminate theobromine now theo why i am eliminating theobromine uh, on the second place because it it is a well known fact that it is found in cocoa and coffee now i have left between two choices of quinine and limonene now since grapefruit would be a citrus fruit there are most chances that limonene will be found hence i will take that now also the uh, particular reason that uh, i'll tell how you one can reach to this answer limonene is a alkaloid uh, alkaloid compounds and they are often bittering agents in the grapefruit under acidic conditions so one must remember that and quinine if we have to rule out quinine quinine is never found in grapes and all quinine is a medicine my dear friends it is used in malaria for curing malaria so you should have eliminated this also and will be left with limonene only next the question is about the protein efficiency ratio now these kind of questions i'll call them as sitter questions like you just have to read them and tick the answer and save time for other questions and numericals which are there in the paper this is a particular definition based question my dear friends and one should uh, not get these kind of questions wrong if you are very if you are serious with your preparation and the definition for per is that it is the weight gain in body mass per gram protein intake so this is a very basic definition it is it is in the gate syllabus uh, a, a topic and one should go through it for sure and should not get this wrong at least now the sixth question is about the ultra high temperature now this is again a sitter question so even if one is not preparing for it one is aware that what are the pasteurization temperature what are the uht temperature and this question comes out a, a very easy one which is 280 degrees fahrenheit for 2 seconds so this becomes your uh, uht treatment temperature for milk now the next question is the conversion of pyruvate to lactic acid in homolactic fermentation now this kind of question i i'll seriously tell uh, will uh, i'll say that these are very tricky questions and they'll consume a lot of time and moreover if you know them you know you know them do not get a negative mark on these question don't try to have a guess work on these kind of questions because it is very hard with guess work to get these kind of questions right so let me walk you through the option first is even if you want to come to a uh, guess then do at least do a calculated guess try to eliminate at least one or two options so what uh, one should do is first of all you should eliminate lactase why i am eliminating lactase at the first place because we know that it is used for digestion of whole milk in the human body so it cannot be used in the homolactic fermentation so this option is eliminated secondly i'll if you do not know the answer you will of course be confused in these three and if you have to take a guess take your guesses but the right answer would be lactate dehydrogenase now you will be uh, guessing that pyruvate dehydrogenase is used is an enzyme which converts pyruvate to lipoamide and pyruvate decarboxylase is an enzyme which converts pyruvate to acetaldehyde via decarboxylation reaction so the correct answer is lactate dehydrogenase now you must be knowing that where does this homolactic fermentation takes place so whenever our body is in uh, is uh, whenever we are exercising we know that there is lactic acid formation in our muscles and cramps are there so this is the place where this reaction takes place in our body next question is which one of the following compounds is present in soya bean and act as a phytoestrogen so first of all we need to understand this question itself that what are phytoestrogens so these are the uh, mimics of the estrogen which are found in the human body now the phytoestrogen found in uh, soya bean is genistein uh, and one has to know it if you have to get this answer correct now for your further information another phytoestrogen which is uh, found in soya bean is diad is diadazine and it, and what are both of these compounds are these are kind of an isoflavonoids now if you are going for an elimination approach in this question you first of all you should eliminate tangerine guys so the basic approach for eliminating things is that you should uh, eliminate in the order which do not have any relation to the question or the product which has been mentioned in the question 
like soya bean i cannot relate tangerine to soya bean because i know tangerine is found in tangerine and citrus peels and i know that curcumin is found in tea catechins curcumin they are found in tea so there are no relation with soya bean again so i'll eliminate both of them then i know that lutein is found in uh, green vegetable it provides color it is a carotenoid so this also goes out hence at the end i reach to genesitin which is a phytoestrogen in soya bean next is a typical bacterial growth curve the first order kinetics for growth rate is observed in now we know that uh, there are four sta uh, five stages that is the lag phase the growth phase the stationary phase and the death phase now the question is has asked that in a typical bacterial growth curve the first order kinetics for growth rate is observed in so the very ba uh, basic question and the answer is the death phase now the lag phase is almost zero the growth curve goes through an exponential so it cannot be a uh, uh, first order kinetics then we have the stationary phase and then the death phase so death phase in the death phase we have the first order kinetics going on now so this was the only match the column present in the paper and this was the only uh, i would say simple and easy to do question according to me because uh, you can get two marks out of uh, just knowing even uh, by one match the column so we can see whenever you are having match the column look for an option which has all the numbers different like here we can see that q it has 4 3 1 and 2 so if you get the answer for q you can tick the answer very easily so we'll go for q that is blanching and i know that blanching is used for inactivation of enzyme it hence it become very simple and option 2 becomes the answer but let's check for others also that is R R is for leaching, and we know leaching is for the separation of dyes. Winterization it is used while we are processing oil or we are while we are cleaning oil, and it is used to separate out wax from the oils. Uh, and last, the hydrogenation. Hydrogenation is used for shortening of fat. That is, there are uh, more bonds formed. Now. Uh, this question and it asks that which of the following statements is incorrect so you should be very wary of these words not incorrect may not be which are present in the question because these words can change the literal meaning of the word and i'll also like to tell that if there are two nots in the question that is minus and minus right so the end result of this kind of a question would be a positive result this means the question is asking that which one is if there are two negatives right so the incorrect option we have to choose in this and hence we need to find which are the correct options so the first option is that cap implies a greater degree of precision than map in maintaining specific levels of the gas composition yeah true because cap is controlled atmosphere packaging and map is modified atmosphere packaging in cap we uh, we have precise levels uh, while in map there are the maintaining specific levels of we try to maintain the level we are not very stubborn in uh, map that we have to maintain a particular composition so this becomes a correct option and hence not our answer second option is modification of the atmosphere inside map is achieved by natural interplay true so whenever we are putting in map we want that the composition of gases should change as the product is respiring or as we are using the packaging material what is the transpiration ra uh, uh, permeation rates and hence uh, option 2 is also right and not an answer now the third option is cap and map limit microbial as well as biochemical activities oh this is a very easy option right so this is also true that is why in the first place we are using it hence this is also not our answer he, uh, so finally fourth is the option and it has to be incorrect so we can cross check it once that gas composition inside a map during the storage is continuously monitored no 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 totally wrong this is totally wrong map during the storage is not continuously monitored it is just kept and then the the system plays with itself and the gas composition changes hence fourth become the answer for question number 
Now the question number 12. Which one of the following enzyme is involved in proteolysis of casein in cheese during aging? Now this is also a very typical question. It asks about a very specific enzyme. And the correct answer for this is cathepsin. Uh, now cathepsin is a proteolytic enzyme. Okay. So now you have to know the answer to answer this question. But even if suppose you had to take a very crude or a very uh, guess kind of thing. The first thing I'll do is I'll eliminate plasmin because I know plasmin uh, degrades blood plasma proteins and you have to know it if you have studied meat. Okay. So plasmin gets eliminated the first. Second alinases get eliminated in my choices because alinases I know belongs for the alien family and it converts alien to allicin. Now when I'm left with myrosinase and cathepsin you really don't have a choice if you don't know the answer you have to tick one and move ahead or if you don't want to get a negative and if you're not sure then you should skip this question because you have to be very specific about it so uh, i but i'll tell you that what myro myrosinase is used for it is a plant defense mechanism so you must have seen that certain plants go for defense mechanism when Herbivores are, are trying to eat them. They, they, they release some bittering agent. So myrosinase helps in that. And the correct answer is cathepsin for this question. Now we are over with all the MCQ questions. And we will start with the MSQ. That is the multiple select question. Now my dear friends. I will like to reiterate the rules for the MSQ. That is the multiple select question. You have to tick only the right answers. Even if you have missed on a right answer, your question gets wrong. Even if you have uh, ticked uh, all the right answers plus a wrong answer, your question is still uh, null and void and you do not get any marks. Plus, if you have uh, ticked only a single correct answer and there were more than one answer, then also is your question a null and void. Hence, you have to uh, be just precisely right since there is no partial marking. But I would suggest that everyone should have attempted this question because there is no negative marking my dear friends in this. If there is no negative marking then we have nothing to lose. Go attempt this question. So let's start. Now the question 13 is which of the following compounds acts as an anti-nutritional factor. Okay this seems like an easy question to me. Uh, I'll start with resveratrol. Okay, so I know that resveratrol is not an anti-nutritional factor. It is found in grapes and it is an antioxidant and it also helps in releasing stress. So yeah, this is not an anti-nutritional factor. Trypsin inhibitor. Oh, come on. This option itself says that, oh, come on, tick me because this is an trypsin inhibitor and trypsin is a protein. So this all, all itself becomes an anti-nutritional factor. Cool. Very good. Third option is phytate. Okay, I know that that phytates uh, form complexes with metals and protein. This is also an anti-nutritional factor. Isoflavone, isoflavones. Come on, guys, you can't get this MSQ wrong because isoflavones are phytoestrogens and antioxidants. So this cannot be an anti-nutritional factor. Uh, I'll mark this question as a pretty easy one, and everyone should have attempted it and should get it right. Uh, next question, choose the correct pair of pigment and their corresponding color in given plant product. Okay, so this seems a little bit challenging question because I have to match three things here from one to two to three. Okay, so uh, the thing is that uh, we have to match that whether flavanols are orange. We, uh, no, flavanols are yellow and they are found in tea and grapes as I have written here also. And hence this is not a right question right, right option okay lycopene lycopene is red okay but red beets no 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 not at all lycopene is found in tomatoes okay so this uh, option is also wrong carotene yellow orange peppers right this becomes a uh, right uh, option betanine purple red cactus pear yeah this is also right so this is a, a photo of cactus pear which i have put here if some of us have not seen it uh, yeah so the correct answer for 14 option is option uh, carotene and the for the betanine. Now question 15. So guys, uh, this is a tricky question I would say. 
because the jury is still out on dichloromethane so this question asks for that what are the common medium media used in supercritical fluid extraction of spices and tea specifically for spices and tea now everybody would take carbon dioxide water and carbon dioxide plus ethanol now the thing is that whether dichloromethane is also present or not see my dear friends uh, some research paper and patents have been done on dichloromethane used as a supercritical fluid and there are evidences of being used as a supercritical fluid for tea also for tea and then now it depends upon iit bombay who have designed this paper that whether they put this in the answer or not and hence i i am not sure about this question and it is pretty okay to not be sure about this question so jury is still out on this and we'll get to know what the exact answers are for this question when the answer key is out now like question number 16 which of the following expression represents the reynolds number of a fluid fl flowing through uniform circular motion so we all know that reynolds number formula is rho v d by nu and nu is a viscosity viscosity dynamic viscosity so this one so here it is a pretty easy question you just have to tick the correct formula so i think this kind of msqs makes our life pretty simple right so density into velocity into internal diameter yeah this is my reynolds formula third option dynamic viscosity no 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 this is not a right uh, option this is wrong this is wrong now average velocity internal diameter kinematic yeah kinematic so my dear friends kinematic viscosity is uh, dynamic viscosity divided upon density so the density from the numerator goes uh, in the denominator uh, dividing the uh, dynamic viscosity and becomes kinematic viscosity so option 2 also becomes right option 1 kinematic viscosity no 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 this is wrong this is wrong option 1 is wrong so the correct answers are 2 and 4 now question 17 that choose the correct pair of governing law and corresponding application okay so the first one is stephen boltzmann law uh, radiation of heat transfer yeah true it tells us that it uh, tells us about the radiation of heat transfer rettinger's law vapor pressure no 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 rettinger's law is for size reduction it is not for vapor pressure rolls law is for size no so see they see Uh, students even if you do not know you should see that rolls law is never for size reduction and hence you can easily eliminate this and hagen poiseuille's law is for pressure drop yeah right true so here we again eliminate uh, two are wrong answers two are right answers so rettinger's law is for size reduction so this is a opposite they have done to trick us but uh, question setter we will not be tricked by you okay let's move on to the next question 18th question 18th question is which of the following combination of analytical equipment okay again a uh, three part options oh my god they're so lengthy but you should not fear from these question because they'll gonna fetch you marks okay so yeah analytical equipment property and the food property okay so particle size analyzer okay it will yeah particle size analyzer will of course tell us particle size distribution and then the span value yeah so basically guys the span what is span value span value tells us that in what span are our particles are distributed suppose from from 0.6 mm to 0.9 mm our particles are distributed so the span value will tell that in what range the particles are distributed now the second option is differential scanning calorimetry glass transition temperature and degree of caking okay so now guys you have to be very very clear that how are they correlating so dsc yeah dsc can tell us glass transition temperature true and then glass transition temperature can be used to know the degree of caking so basically what is caking caking is that uh, particles will stick to each other and form a solid cake right so they will so yeah so this option becomes correct because it can tell us glass transition temperature can tell us the degree of caking because what kind of you know external environment our product will face we can then govern okay so capillary viscometer okay it will measure viscosity true and viscosity is used for sensory right so viscosity tells us the sensory attribute of our 
product that what is the mouth feel of it how we are we are going to swallow it and all that stuff yeah right so third option also is right now texture profile analyzer tpa it will tell us about the morphology okay morphology i might have some problem with this thing morphology and then it can tell us about the chewiness okay so guys this can be a problematic option when you are in the paper setting because tp and chewiness match with each other because we can tell that what is the gumminess adhesiveness chewiness of the product by a tpa and morphology if you go through the synonyms of morphology morphology tells you about the external characteristics of the product so hence i will tick this option also if this is an msq uh, but we'll get to know that what is the right but i'll tick i'll go with this for the texture profile analyzer it will tell us about the morphology of the product that how does the product feel from the physical characteristics that is what when we are using morphology in the biology uh, segments of the biology books also okay so 19th question this question asked us which of the following is a correct pair of grass chemical food preservative so grass friends is generally regarded as safe uh, uh, preservatives now what of them is a grass so when i'll suggest you to go with the elimination method first of all all of uh, we have to see that whether it's grass or not sodium nitrate no not at all this is not grass so you have to you don't have to check the further things if you know that this additive is not a grass additive you can straight away eliminate this option right dehydroacetic acid no 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 it's not a grass again so two options eliminated we are left with two sodium lactate yeah it's a grass additive it is used for bacteria precooked means true good one option done caprylic acid insect cheese wraps good this is also right so caprylic acid is a Uh, is used in industries for insects and antimicrobial activities and it is very famous in the industry so yeah it can be used in the in cheese wraps too so the answer becomes sodium lactate and caprylic acid for this one now we are coming to the numerical questions so i'll not be solving the full numericals here because uh, this is just an answer key video if you want me to give full length explanations to this numerical you can tell me in the comment sections below but the answer for this uh, but i'll give you a gist that what they have tried to do in the question is that they have a single effect evaporator they are putting in 10% juice they want 40% concentration out so it's a simple heat transfer question and the answer would this for will be 2070 kilowatts now since it was an integer so you have to round off and i don't think that uh, iit will accept any other answer whether it uh, accept 2070 because the answer was coming out to be pretty straight forward and integer so if you are getting it 2069 then sorry it would be deemed as incorrect usually they keep a margin but when it, the question says integer and the answer is also coming out to be precise integer it is really hard Next question was about a cold storage plant of 500 kg of potato and the constants uh, the CP was given temperature was given and for the time was given and the plant runs at an efficiency of 70% and we have to round it off to two decimal places so i think that the answer would come from 2.30 to 2.31 so any of the answers if you have put in here it would be marked as correct and we'll further know that what range iit bombay will be keeping for this answer but yeah if you are if you are putting in a 2.30 or 2.31 it would definitely be correct the last numerical is about the dry air fed into the tray uh, tray dryer and it asks us about the humidity of the air leaving it so the answer for this is anywhere between 0.156 to 0.160 your answer would be correct so guys this is the end of our video for the answer key please do let me know that how much you are scoring in the food technology section and do also go through your um, other section whether it is thermodynamics or for excel people it is uh, some other subject and tell me uh, and do comment your final scores predicted scores so we can come up with a predicted score and a 
uh, marks uh, correlation and can help you guys further for filling up of the forms in colleges as and when they appear so what is coming up next is i'll be uh, doing an interaction with students so that you can know about that uh, specific college where you have to take admission in for your masters because believe me guys it is a very big step and one should take it after giving it a very good thought then there will be detailed college wise form filling videos coming up soon as and when they appear and what and even if guys your gate did not went well do not get disheartened there are many other options and i'll be making a separate video thank you so much guys please do subscribe and hit on the bell button whenever i am uploading a video you will get notified thank you so much